It is very unusual. I mean, I think you can see famously there was backlash to the first moon movement in France um, from, you know, most famously Catherine Deneuve, although she was only really the figurehead of a wider group of intellectual women who wrote that famous letter in Le Monde. Uh, and, and as you say, just as recently as December 2020, uh, December of this year, 2023, Macron was still weighing in to defend Depardieu. Um, that being said, there has been some momentum building, including in government, to, to rebalance things in terms of gender in the film industry. So they did introduce uh, some subsidies in 2018 so that you would get an extra budget, 15% bonus if you had a woman as director, cinematographer or head of production. So it's not sort of come out of completely nowhere, but this is a kind of another level. Yeah. It seems to have been prompted by allegations, historic allegations made by actor and filmmaker Judith Goodrich. What do we know about these allegations? Well, Judith Goodrich uh, has talked about the fact that when she was underage, 14, 15, she was openly in relationships, uh, a relationship with a much older director and also she said he's another much older director of uh, abuse in the context of the filming of a film. Um, uh, so. You know, it, these seem to have been relations that everybody knew about. There's sort of photographic evidence in line with various other scandals in other arenas than the film industry. Uh, things like uh, famously Vanessa Springora's book Consent, where she talks about the fetid writer Gabrielle Matzner being in a relationship with her that was absolutely endorsed. So I think the really disturbing aspect of this, which Godrèche has been keen to underline, is the fact that you know these things were normalised in the wider society, and so the film industry is only emblematic of much more deep, deeper structural problems. Yes, I wanted to ask you about you know a sort of very French sensibility around sexual encounters, I suppose, uh, like this. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that plays a part in how this has been managed? Absolutely, on so many different levels. I mean, these things go back many centuries at a time when the modern marriage was beginning in Anglophone nations and sort of Protestant Northern European nations um, in the 18th century. The French were still having what was called uh, amour passion and a kind of uh, a culture of seduction, which you see in uh, something like Dangerous Liaison. So there were literally manuals being circulated about how to seduce people. So there was this putting on a pedestal of the chase as something desirable in itself. And all of this speaks to, you know, more recently discourses around freedom being right at the heart of the French Republic. Uh, in the 1970s, a, a left intellectual class being very influenced by psychoanalysis and Freud and the idea um, of, of sort of civil society placing too many restrictions on people's freedom. So uh, for that reason, sex was really kind of celebrated, um, uh, you know, on a higher plane than other things. And you really see that now. And also dovetailing with film as art providing a kind of cover for um, laissez-faire attitudes. Yeah, and it is interesting because with that kind of attitude coupled by the sort of power imbalance in an industry where people are trying to, you know, achieve fame, stardom, um, it's the sort of perfect storm in a way, isn't it? Absolutely. And what's great is that Gordesh's uh, lobbying has managed to achieve uh, not only uh, examination of the film industry, but also other performing arts and fashion and advertising uh, industries as well, which is something she, she was very keen on. And you can see what those all have in common is the fact that not only are there large amounts of money at stake, but what is being traded is people's appearance um, and actually sexuality to some extent a lot of the time. And that's where these really troubling grey areas emerge. Uh, and absolutely, you know, what can happen on a shoot is not disconnected from, from real life. And that's the kind of line with which some of these abusers seem to have been playing. It is interesting, you know, we look at Gerard Depardieu, we're talking about uh, the Macron supporting, being publicly supportive of him. I mean, he seems to internationally have such a bad reputation now. It's, it's astonishing that he was even still making films. Mm, it does show, um, a, you know, a sense of being disconnected, really. But he was such a national treasure in the 80s and 90s that there, there's been a willingness to turn a blind eye for a long time. I really am put in mind, actually, of what I almost see as the forerunner to, to Me Too in France, which was the Dominique Strauss-Kahn affair in 2011. And we have the same kind of, um, you know, combination of the, the world media scrutinizing um, a, a sort of Frenchman's uh, mores, so it would seem, of course, uh, charges were never, uh, he was never convicted. Um, there was an undisclosed settlement in that case, but you know where he was accused of uh, abuse against a, a hotel maid. And in France, there was a huge backlash 
uh, against the world media, and there was more emphasis on the kind of repressive aspects of the American penal system than what Dominique Strauss-Kahn might have done initially. Certainly, this first wave was absolutely in defense of him, and I think there was absolutely an element of nationalism, national pride, and anti-Americanism at play there as well. Yes, and sort of the buttoned-up nature of Americans versus French. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you talk about there's more of a, a wave of support for this now. Are there men mm -hmm. in the industry acknowledging and coming out and wanting to change the dynamics? I believe there are. I mean, I haven't seen much negative backlash against um, Godrech, whereas obviously there was, as we said, uh, with DSK and also um, Me Too. And I think it's partly because of what's happened in between. And I think it's also because she, uh, of her being a child, uh, as with some of these other people from other industries. So actually, the investigation I see, what I've read, seems to lead with looking at the conditions of minors and adults. So I think that's what's really captured the public imagination. And I, I, I feel that the mood has changed. And you can see that in the fact that nobody's really daring to speak out. And it's, there's a kind of conspicuous absence of backlash compared to all the other recent sort of um, bumps in this line, which hopefully is kind of slowly taking an upward trajectory towards having a proper reckoning and uh, an adjustment of relations between the genders in France. Yeah, really great to get your um, thoughts on this and, and sort of analysis of it, Mary. Appreciate your time. Thank you.